Excellent! What's up everybody and welcome to my first video for Computex 2016. This is kind of my Computex prep video, but I want to start out by saying a huge thank you to my sponsors for this event. Fractal Design, MSI, and G-Skill. Uh, without them I would not be able to do any of this coverage, so thank you. Uh, so show them some support by clicking their sponsor links in the description down below. Anyway, this video is kind of a preparation video for Computex and I didn't want to make it like a what's in my bag video, although a lot of this stuff is going in my bag. This is more of a uh, overview of some of the technology I'm bringing along with me. And I wanted to talk about creating video content at an event like Computex because it can be a bit of a challenge and I've taken some steps this year to improve my production methodology as well as hopefully the audio and video quality. Now if you're looking at this video right now and thinking, Paul, what the hell, it's, this looks and sounds pretty mediocre. Well, that's because I'm using my cell phone right now to record this. This is my Nexus 6 and I'm going to kind of show you guys a progression. I'm going to start with this. In a second, I'll show you some of the cameras I'm going to be using, and I'll switch to those as we move along. Hopefully, you'll be able to see a progression as we move from one to the next and get a better idea of how, hopefully, the content I bring you this year is going to look and sound a lot better. So here's everything laid out on the table, and uh, over in this area, we have audio and video capture equipment. Right up here, we have this MSI workstation laptop that I'm going to be using to edit videos. Well, actually, my editor is mainly going to be using to edit videos. And then I have some other random knickknacks and stuff that I picked up at Target and whatnot, so I'll cover that at the end. Anyway, I want to get off of my cell phone camera, so let's start off by talking about this camera, which you've probably seen me use before, this is the Panasonic Lumix LX100. So I've been using this camera for a couple years. Um, it has a couple quirks. The main thing is that it does not have an audio input jack. So when I'm recording with this, I gotta rely on the built-in audio. And it kinda sucks sometimes because it picks up some of the, the noise inside from focusing and, and zooming and that kind of thing. Can you guys hear that? Image quality on this is really great, and it gets very nice close-up photos, and I have this aftermarket kind of cool lens cap on there that pops open when I turn it on, if I can figure out how to turn it on. Hey, look at that. It's fancy. The other thing is there's a fleck of dust on the sensor, which is bugs the crap out of me, but there's not a whole lot that I can do about it right now. Maybe I'll find like some fancy camera guru in Taiwan to take this apart and fix it. But anyway, uh, let's switch to this camera. Yay, this is so much better. Okay, so camera one is my cell phone, camera two is the LX100 that I'm using now, camera three is going to be this little guy, which is a actual mono price, kind of a GoPro knockoff, shoots 1080 video, doesn't get very good audio because it's in this housing, but I've got that attached to kind of a selfie stick thing, and I'll use that for quick shots externally, or you know, if I need to hang it out in an airplane window or something. This is my little flexible tripod that I've been using for the LX100. This is what I used last year at Computex, and I had the LX100 set up on, on top here, and this little offset thing, thing to the side, if you watched the video last year, I had my uh, Zoom H1 mic kind of hanging down off of there, actually with this little ball joint right there. And I was able to kind of walk around with the camera and point it at stuff and record things, and I was able to point the mic back at my face and record that separate audio so it didn't sound mediocre like the audio that you're hearing right now. Anyway, I've reconfigured this for this year. It's still going to be put in use a little bit. I will still use this with the LX100, and um, I like it because it's flexible and you can wrap it around things. Or if I just need to set it up on a table or something, that'll be good. So those are my uh, three cameras. Fourth camera is this one right here. Alright, so here's the GH4. Uh, this is my main camera. I actually do have two of these cameras, um, but I'm only bringing one of them. And this one has been upgraded and outfitted with some, some new technology. But uh, the lens I'm using on there is one of the Panasonic lenses. It is the 12 to 35. Yes, HD camera. Uh, it's a really nice lens and it gets really good image quality. It does have a floating focus ring, which is the only thing I really don't like about it. But the nice part is that it's really compact and fairly small. So for travel, that works great. GH4 is also great for travel because for a DSLR, it is also very small when it comes to the size of the body. And one of the things I really like, especially for taking this on the go, is the GH4 battery life is absolutely amazing. So, you know, I'm really I've, like, for instance, when I brought this to Austin and I did coverage there, I literally did not ever, I used one battery the whole time. I never changed it out or anything. Anyway, flip out screen, all that good stuff, external audio connections, and then as you might be able to see, I have this cage going on on the outside. It's kind of a mid-level cage by ePhoto Inc. DSLR camera, uh, camera rig. Anyway, um, Kyle got one of these cages too, and his was pretty expensive. I think it was over 200 bucks. And I was considering that, uh, some of the ones that are solid body, um, this one is in pieces, but it comes all built and connected together, and uh, I like it so far. It was about 85 bucks, and it gives you a bunch of extra mounting points all around, so you can attach stuff like this little guy in here, 
which is a little uh, external cold shoe, which I'm gonna be using to mount my audio solution. Also, you get a handle up on top, and uh, that really helps for, well, being able to just pick up the camera and move it around like this. Also really helps for when it's on the monopod. So the monopod I'm using is this one. Well, that's the monopod, it's from Manfrotto. Uh, this, so this, that's the monopod with the rig on top. This, uh, this fluid head is actually Velbon Velflow 9PH368. This one, this is only about 40, to $45. Um, Logan first tipped me off to this little fluid head. And you know, it's not super nice like some of the really expensive Manfrotto ones, but it really gets the job done. And even as a fluid head, it's not that bad. You can do pretty decent pans and tilts and all that stuff. So that fits up on top. And um, with this Manfrotto monopod, which has the little legs down on the bottom, uh, I, I also use this in Austin and I really like it. Uh, I apologize, I don't recall the model of this monopod right off the bat, but I will link it down in the description if you guys want to check that out. So. That's kind of my mobile rig, and you know, it can stand up or you can maneuver it with the little handle or, or that kind of thing and move it around to zoom in or zoom out or whatever you want to do. So actually Kyle's probably going to be using this a lot because we're going to be filming each other, but uh, I don't know, hope, hopefully he likes this configuration. That said, let's switch to that camera and see how that one looks. Okay, we switched to the GH4. I'm using the built-in mic on the GH4, and let's go over some of this other stuff on here. Now, if you're recording stuff or if you're editing stuff, you're going to need some audio and playback. These are my Fostex headphones that I got from Mayflower Electronics, actually. I might not be bringing these, but I'm going to bring a nice set of cans. These have a nice, like, you can, you can replace the audio cable on it, so using this little short one made it pretty nice for monitoring while I was testing the monopod rig. Uh, also have a nice little pair of earbuds here. These are from Think Sound. Um, I think these are the rain. There's rain and thunder, but these are actually pretty nice little earbuds. Uh, and then I have some additional audio cables. This little flexible one is for connecting the Zoom H6 up to the GH4 when it's plugged in. Uh, also just have a little uh, eighth inch audio extension. Some minor things over here to show real quick. Another little mini tripod, that's to set the Zoom H6 up on if we need to set it up on a desktop. I have a tiny little uh, screwdriver, multi-screwdriver kit. This is actually made for snowboarding, um, but I'm taking it with me because uh, TSA doesn't get mad at it because it doesn't look like it could be used as a stabbing weapon or anything. But that's handy for attaching and unattaching tri uh, cameras to tripods and anything else where you might need um, to connect something or use a screwdriver. Uh, some minor little things here. This is actually, I'm gonna attach this to my belt. I made a hole in my belt, so I'm gonna screw that in from the opposite side, and then that just gives me a little cold shoe on my belt, and that will be so if I need to wear the Zoom H6 on me, on my belt, instead of the camera, hopefully I can just pop that in there. I really don't know how that's gonna work. Uh, memory cards, of course, these are from Kingston, as well as, uh, what is that, SanDisk. Uh, these Kingston little 64 gig micro SD XC cards uh, do a really good job. I've been using those for the past year or so. And then um, the Zoom H6. I've kind of shown you, but I haven't really shown you, but I got a Zoom H6. I'm actually really, really happy with this so far. It's a little bit on the expensive side, but um, I'm happy to have gotten it. So it's got four separate XLR inputs. Uh, it's got two built-in microphones that come along with it that you can pop off and remove from the top. So this is the XY version here that gets kind of stereo sound, points in two directions. And uh, this is kind of multi-purpose, I think. And it's got a little carrying case, so you can put everything in there. Here's one of the other mic attachments that comes with it. So um, you can really swap this, swap them out, and depending on what your situation and your sound situation is. Um, I'm not sure how good these are going to work for a noisy show floor environment, so I do have some other solutions as well, but I can pop those onto the end, and they even are removable. Let's assume, <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure that's not a delicate connection at all. But you can pop those off, and I can, I can even use it without anything connected to the front there. So if I just need to use it as a sound bridge, or soundboard, I can go XLRs into that, and I'm going to go out of the uh, headphone jack so I can control the volume into the GH4, or if the GH4 needs to be further away or something and I can't plug into it directly, because I didn't want to do any wireless for this trip. Wireless on the show floor is, is dangerous. Um, so if I need to plug into it directly and I can't plug into the GH4, then I will just attach this to my hip and off to the races, just record sound separately on the SD card. Also put that little adapter on it, and that is so it can go on top of the GH4, which I can't show you because I'm using the GH4 right now. I will show you in just a minute though. I've switched back to recording with the LX100 so I can show you guys this setup at least a little bit more configured the way it's supposed to be. So there you have it. You know, it is a little top heavy. It's slightly cumbersome, but I don't think it's too bad overall. Um, so again, the Zoom H6 is up on top. And uh, right now I have going out the side of it just my little XLR adapter for 
my lav mic. So this would be a configuration, for example, where I could be holding the camera from back here, recording stuff or whatever, blah, blah, and then I can just have that XLR mic wired down and attached to me, and then I can narrate while I'm filming, which is actually uh, pretty convenient for the XLR because it stays in the right position and doesn't move around too much or anything. Uh, the Zoom H1, let's turn it on, I'm sorry, Zoom H6, I need to remember I, I've upgraded now. Turn it on just like that. Starts up pretty quick. Gives you levels right there on the thing, and then all you gotta do is kinda hit the button for the right channel. I think I have that plugged into channel three, yes? And now we have a little indicator that says, yes, the little, the little lightning bolt means you have phantom power. And now this is picking up audio from, from my little lav mic there. Anyway, so that's pretty much how it looks. It's nice to be able to see the, the visuals right there. And then the other thing is, um, once you turn on standby, it, it automatically starts piping that sound through to your outputs, if that's what you're doing. So, theoretically down here on my monitor, I sh well, at least this, if it hasn't gone into partial sleep mode, I should be able to see, yeah, so there's, there's levels right there. The mic, the mic going up and down, that's, that's for me talking. It can hear me. It's listening. Now the Zoom H6 does come with its own little mic windscreen, but I picked up this one too, because I think it's kind of funny looking. And I like the I like the dead cat one, so I'll put that one on top of there. That'll look cool. And then, uh, as mentioned, I'm probably not even going to be using the built-in mics on the Zoom H6 all that much, because I'll be using other solutions. So I have a, a lav mic here, so it just connects via, It needs this little connector, although this is kind of large and bulky, sticking off of the side of the Zoom H6. It needs this in order to provide XLR phantom power to this little mic. I also have this handheld mic, Samson Q8. So uh, in particular on the loud show floor when there's lots of music going on and that kind of thing, being able to hold this and just hold it right next to your mouth um, does wonders. It's nice because I can hold it right by my face and I kind of feel like I'm on the Price is Right. Next contestant on the Price is Right. This is stupid, no. I have a short XLR cable to go with that one. And then again, I, this actually just, this little mic windscreen came from, from uh, Amazon just earlier today, but I have, I have this dead cat as well. Dead kitten. This one is from my Zoom H1, but I think I might put it on top of there. I know, what do you think? Should I go with the, the more traditional windscreen like that one, or go with the dead kitten? I'm thinking dead kitten. Finally over here we have Ed's mouse. Ed from TechSource. I don't really need this mouse for production, but he left it at my house when he was over here last week, and so I'm, I'm actually bringing it to Taiwan to deliver to him, even though we both live in Southern California. That makes sense. I decided to move into the bathroom so I could actually see how this looks from my own perspective. So right now I'm filming myself and I'm monitoring myself on the headphones, which sounds kind of weird because I can hear myself. Uh, lav mic is mic'd up to, to me right here. Going into that, going into the camera. Camera is up and running. And you know, I gotta be honest, I don't have any zip ties holding this thing together, so it feels a little bit more professional than it's been in the years past. All right, guys, I'm back to recording with the GH4 and I'm using the lav mic. So uh, here's a quick run through of my miscellaneous pile. Also, Hero's in the background back there. He he let out some epic toots just a minute ago. I'll see if I can catch any more of them. Anyway, uh, all right, so we have a wired magazine because it's always good to have some analog reading material for the plane or the travel or whenever you're bored. Uh, I got a new T-Mobile account. This is literally going to be just for a month because T-Mobile has really good international uh, setup. So in Taiwan, I'll have full data and cell reception and all that good stuff. Extra batteries, always gotta have that. Uh, stay prepared for potentially getting sick at many cons. So I got some Airborne and some Dayquil just in case. Uh, I wanna have some food for on the go. So I got my Cliff Bars, chocolate chip. Apparently I'm, I'm, I really like chocolate chips. Uh, and then I also got some, you know, some peanuts there just so, so that if, if he needs some quick protein, pop those in there. Gotta stay clean, stay clean and fresh. So I got my, you know, my, my materials here for, for all that all that stuff. Don't ask what the baby wipes are for. Uh, I got some sunscreen, probably won't need it, but you know, it's there just in case. New toothbrush and toothpaste. Listerine pocket packs as well as some gum. Having like clean, fresh breath as you're working for eight or 12 hours a day and going lots of places and eating random food and everything, I find that to be quite handy. Uh, also, I got a J-Pillow. This was a complete, just spur of the moment impulse buy from Amazon last night and it got here today. Thanks, Amazon Prime. Um, but it's supposed to be like a really nice neck pillow and when you're doing a 12 hour flights or more, then that's pretty important. Okay guys, I'm back to the lav mic now to take a look at the MSI workstation laptop that MSI is lending us to use for the next uh, couple weeks. So first off, I didn't even realize it came with a little carrying pouch. It's nice, a little zippered protective 
pouch, especially for travel. Um, and before I even get into the laptop itself, I am going to be rolling with some supplemental storage. These are a couple external drives from Corsair. You've probably seen this before. I've done videos on them. I got the GTX right here, which is about 256 gig. And I got the GS here, which is about 500 gig. So tons of storage on these. And uh, the GTX is really fast. I actually edit off of this drive, so I will do that sometimes. The GS is more for mass storage, but I have a bunch of games on here. My rule when I'm uh, doing filming on the road is that if I have any footage that's on an SD card, I don't work with it or touch it or do anything with it until it's copied to at least two locations. So that usually means internally to the laptop itself, as well as preferably some external locations. So I also have a HyperX SSD. This is a HyperX Savage uh, 480 gig, and I've got that connected to a USB 3.0 adapter. Um, so that is gonna be really, really fast, just about as fast as it would be if you connected it straight to a SATA connection, to like on a desktop. So that's gonna give me plenty of uh, SSD storage to work off of, and especially when you're working with a lot of raw uh, video footage in Premiere, it's really nice to have fast storage. And finally, here's the MSI Workstation laptop. Specific model is WS66QJ-024, which is kind of a mouthful, but basically you got a 15.6 inch 1080 Full HD screen, an Intel Core i7-6700HQ processor, an NVIDIA Quadro M2000M, 4 gig uh, workstation graphics card, a one terabyte uh, 7200 RPM hard drive and 128 gig SSD as well as 16 gigs of DDR4 memory, as well as wireless, Bluetooth, Windows 10, professional, all the stuff you would expect with a workstation system. As well as lots of connectivity for external monitors, SD card reader, USB type C connector, tons and tons of features on this laptop. So we're gonna be putting it through the paces and I will let you know how it performs for us. Well, I've just realized I'm pretty horribly backlit, but uh, that's okay, the video's pretty much over. Um, I have one last item here to share. This is an AOC external USB 2.0 powered and connected monitor, which is pretty handy. It's actually my wife's, um, but I've used it a couple times. The model is AOC E1649FWU, and it's pretty small, but um, you know, basically you can set it up vertically or whatever. And the fact that you just plug it in via USB, and uh, you know, you gotta load a little driver, but it just works, power and data over the USB connection. So uh, I'll be providing that for Joe so he can have a secondary monitor to use while editing on the MSI workstation. But that is gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. By the time you watch this, I will probably be on a plane to Taiwan and perhaps even another secret mystery location in between that I can't even tell you about yet. I wanna say one last big thank you to my sponsors, Fractal Design, MSI, and G-Skill for helping me go on this trip and bring you lots of informative and educational content. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to my channel for all the Computex videos coming up very soon, and we'll see you next time.